we are now going to continue with um, our uh, speakers and in terms of this session being on a policy, some of the policy issues uh, uh, before us in terms of thinking about efficiency and renewables. And uh, we're going to hear here um, uh, from two organizations with which uh, my organization has worked a lot over the years. And we will start by hearing from Ruth McCormick, who is the Senior Policy Associate with the Business Council for Sustainable Energy. Thanks, Carol. I appreciate that introduction. Um, I thought I'm assigned today to talk a little bit about how the Business Council for Sustainable Energy and our clean energy partners are driving economic growth and providing energy security across the nation. And I thought to do that, I would give you all a little bit of background about the Business Council and who we are and what we do and the kinds of policies that we are promoting. But um, to spend most of my time really talking about and profiling some of our member companies so that I can give you a flavor of the kind of work that they are doing on the ground all across the country to really provide the kind of economic growth that we need to see continue in this country. The Business Council for Sustainable Energy is a coalition of clean energy companies that kind of ranges the spectrum. We include a broad portfolio of renewable energy technologies. We include solar, wind, hydro, and geothermal technologies. We include energy efficiency companies and associations, and also natural gas. And together, we talk about how these clean energy policies um, can help to provide the kind of economic growth and energy security that we're all striving for in this country. And we promote policies that will expand markets for these technologies, both at the federal, state level, and even at the international level. And we talk about the importance of being able to integrate these technologies on the electric grid. I have a map which shows where our companies are. We have about 60 companies across the country. Um, I would invite you to visit our website to get a copy of this yourself. And we also have a Facebook page. I'd like to invite you to go and become our friend and we'll keep you updated on things that these companies are doing and that we are doing together as a coalition. But by, to give you a flavor of who our companies are, we include companies ranging from Walmart, to the American Wind Energy Association, Sempra Energy, number of California utilities, um, the North American insulation manufacturers, and many others. So to spend a little bit of time talking about the kind of work that these companies are doing on the ground providing economic growth, I thought I would showcase if I have time, and I'll be very quick about this, Carol, uh, at least three of our companies, and to demonstrate a little bit about where their growth is occurring and what kind of work they're actually doing. Because when we talk about these policies, what really matters is the work that companies are doing on the ground and how it impacts real people and real lives. The first company that I would like to talk about is one called Recycled Energy Development, or RED for short. This is a waste energy recovery company. And what they do is they go out and they recover waste heat from industrial facilities and then they use that waste heat to generate electricity on site, which helps to lower energy costs and pollution from these industrial facilities. Uh, this kind of technology that's being used and that RED does so well has been demonstrated by the Oak Ridge National Lab to actually help to save money for industries across the country and can also stimulate jobs and economic growth. And I'm going to look at my fact sheets here so that I make sure I get the data here correct. But according to Oak Ridge, if you l use more of this kind of cogeneration, we can actually provide 20% of U.S. generating capacity by 2030, generate $234 billion in new investment, and create nearly 1 million jobs. And these are real jobs we can see by the work that RED itself has done that this uh, can really result tangible uh, results. One of their projects is in a silicon manufacturing facility in West Virginia where they've actually recovered the waste heat there and that facility has been able to reduce its waste heat uh, and it, it puts out about 3,000 degrees of waste energy which can then be recycled into the plant and used to generate its own clean power reducing um, by 20 percent its 
out, or increasing its output of its product by 20 percent and increasing jobs in the process. And this one facility from using this technology is actually bringing silicon manufacturing jobs back to the United States from China. So it, it's saving energy in this kind of way, is making it, this, these kinds of companies more globally competitive, saving them money and increasing jobs. Another company that I wanted to highlight is uh, also a member of the Solar Energy Industry Association. It's First Solar. This is a solar company that um, has some innovative technologies to bring the cost of solar technology um, down and to make it com cost comparative to other types of generating technologies. And it has manufacturing facilities here in the United States, both in Ohio and in Arizona. In its Arizona facility is actually, they're, they're building a new facility to help provide the material that they need for some of the projects that they're building in the West. Uh, they have 200 employees now and they're adding 600 more manufacturing jobs in this one facility in Mesa, Arizona. And then their facility in Perrysville, Ohio already employs more than 1,200 people. And they have projects that are in the process of being constructed this year and or next. There's about 10 projects coming online that each will generate a, hundreds of construction jobs during the construction phase, which is usually one to three years, and uh, providing home power to about hundreds of thousands of homes in California. And I'm going to spend t time just doing one more really quickly if I can, Carol. And then I'll end. We heard a little bit earlier in the other room from someone from the Department of Defense talking about the work that the Defense Department is doing to bring more renewables and other clean energy technologies so that we can help the military to perform its mission better and save, co save costs and save lives. One of our members called Skybuilt Power is doing just that for the military. They have these systems called plug and play systems where they can provide a suite of technologies to the military and or for other uh, needs including homeland security, disaster assistance, areas where you need immediate power. They can bring these systems in, drop them in, and they can help to provide power immediately. It reduces the fuel costs for the military and or these other kinds of facilities. Um, and in the process, it can save lives because the, the Defense Department indicates that for every 24 fuel convoys, there's either one life lost in the field or injured. And so it not only saves money, but it makes the Defense Department more secure and is saving lives. So I think this is just a sampling of the kind of work that our members are doing, and I appreciate the opportunity to share this with you. Our goal is to try to advocate on behalf of policies that will help these companies grow and provide the kind of economic growth and opportunity that I've described for you here, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have later. Great. Thanks a whole lot. Um, and now we will turn to Manning Farachi, who is the Vice President of Legislative Affairs for SIA, the Solar Energy Industries Association. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm, I'm Manny Farashi. I'm with the Vice President of Legislative Affairs for SIA. It's a real pleasure to be here. Good to see you this afternoon. Uh, I just want to spend a, a couple minutes just telling you uh, what I think is a very impressive story, and I think you'll agree is an impressive narrative of what's going on in the U.S. solar industry right now. Um, if you, and it ties in the policy, um, because this really is a narrative of the good that you can get if you put in place a stable, reliable policy that the private sector can rely on, you're going to end up getting the results that you want. So in 2006, Congress had the foresight to put in place an investment tax credit for solar and subsequently uh, extended that credit for eight years through 2016 and really provided stability and reliability in the marketplace so that investors and developers knew that that was going to be there and they could rely on it. It sent the signal from a federal policy perspective that we were serious about renewable energy production. And if you look at the results, I think you'll agree that they've been impressive. Last year alone, the U.S. solar industry grew 67 percent. Right now, we, we employ 100,000 employees. And the cost curve, 
So is an incentive working? Is an industry maturing? Is the technology getting better? If you look at that, installed costs last year were down 20 percent. Since the investment tax credit was put in place, the per watt price is down 40 percent. So I think by any objective measure, whether you're interested in clean energy deployment, whether you're interested in economic growth, whether you're interested in the environment and you want to have a clean and safe way of generating uh, electricity, the solar industry is doing it. And it's doing it with a diverse supply of, uh, uh, diverse suite of technologies. It's not just one thing. You've got photovoltaic, you've got CSP, you've got solar heating and cooling. All of these are amazing technologies. They're all getting more efficient. They're all getting more cost competitive. And it's because we had the foresight to put in place a federal policy framework that's going to work to promote this sort of good economic growth today. And it's actually the, the timing of this event is quite good because today uh, we released um, our analysis, the solar market insight for the first quarter of this year. And again, the results continue to go in the right direction. Uh, 2.85 gigawatts of installed capacity, that's enough to power 600,000 homes. Um, we had a 66 percent increase in grid uh, connected photovoltaics. I mean, this is an amazing progress. And if we have the foresight to continue having, putting in place reliable policies that the private sector can depend on, we're going to continue to get these good policies. And if you back this out and you look at it from a larger perspective, we're not operating in a vacuum in the United States. This is a global marketplace for renewable technologies. Right now, the leading solar uh, nation in the world is Germany and most people don't. Now this crowd's a little bit more knowledgeable about renewable energy than most, but when you tell most people that Germany leads the world in solar technology and solar deployment, it, it, you get a very stunned look on their face. That's not what most people would think. Well, it's because they had to, they put in place a, a policy, they were serious about getting that, the, that sort of deployment and they've got the results. The U.S., by any objective measure, is going to lead the world in solar deployment. That's a fact. The question is, what role is the United States going to play in that? Now, if we keep in place a stable, reliable policy, if we keep the ITC in place, if we put in place financing mechanisms that help spur this economic growth and, and capitalize on the private sector, we're going to continue to get these sort of good results, and we're going to have the solar value chain that gets you manufacturing across the country, like we were talking about in Ohio and in Arizona. We're going to get those positive results if we do that. But if we back away now, if we, if we withdraw, if we walk away from the incentives that have been proven to work, we're just going to, we're going to have solar in this country. The question is, is who's going to do it? So I think that if you look at going forward for the U.S. solar industry, the, the outlook is, is bright, to use, a, to use a pun there, for the solar industry. And, uh, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, we're going to, we look forward to working with our allies here in the room to make sure that we have a good pan-renewable policy in as well to make sure that uh, we're addressing the nation's larger energy policy goals. So with that, I'll stop and if we have any time, answer any questions.